Number nine, show that e to the three x and e to the negative x are linearly independent. Now that there should be two methods to show this: one without using the Ronskian, another using the Ronskian. Although using the Ronskian is easier, it doesn't capture the idea of what linear independence is. So even though uh, the solution not using the Ronskian is longer, I would ask students to know how to do this. All right, here's the solution without using the Ronskian. Suppose uh, we we try to prove by contradiction. Okay. So we, we suppose that the two functions are linearly dependent. What does that mean? That means there's a C1 and C2, not both of them zero, at least one of them not zero, which will satisfy this for all values of x, or for, for all values of x in, in an open interval at least, uh, because linear independence of functions are defined, can be defined in open intervals. Okay. Uh, we move this term to the right, and we do this, and we divide, and we get this algebraic equation here. Now, do you find something strange about this? On the left side, you have an exponential function. On the right side, you have a constant function. And we're trying to say that these two should equal on an interval. Now, is that possible? No, because this is increasing, whereas this is not. This is, uh, this is a constant function, so it's impossible for... Uh, an increasing function to be equal to a, a constant function. Therefore, that's, there's a contradiction. So where did we make the mistake? The mistake was our initial assumption that we're treating these two as linearly independent. Uh, linearly dependent. Therefore, we have proved that they are linearly independent. That's how argument by contradiction works, right? Suppose there's something that it's not, and then you derive some contradiction. Therefore, our initial assumption was wrong, and that's how you show what you want to prove. Okay, here's the proof using the Ronskian, much easier. All you have to do is take the function, put its derivatives, and then you have to compute the determinant, which is AD minus BC. And if you compute, you get negative 4 to the e to the 2x. You know that uh, exponential functions can never be zero. It, it's, it's always non-zero. So uh, this is never zero. What does that mean? That means that the two functions are linearly independent. It's much simpler. Next question. 10. Uh, solve 4y double prime plus 12y prime plus 13y equal to 0, a constant coefficient second order differential equation with this initial condition. Okay, we have to solve the characteristic equation, so 4, 12, and 13 here. Uh, in order to solve this, you should use the quadratic formula. Hopefully you remember the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we need to compute this and simplify and get negative 3 over 2 plus minus i. Now you should know that when you have your solution as a plus minus bi, then in that case um, the, the solution is e to the a times x. Uh, times c1 cosine of bx, c2 sine of bx. In our case, a is negative 3 over 2, so I put the negative 3 over 2 here, and then b is equal to 1, because b, b is the coefficient of one, i, and it's 1 times i, so b is 1, so i simply have 1 times x and sine 1 times x. So this is the general solution. Now we have two parameters, c1 and c2. How do we pin these two down? Uh, we do it by using this initial condition. So we use it, uh, so, uh, but before we use it, here it requires that we know what y prime is, right? So we compute the y prime, so we take the y and differentiate by using the product rule, as you can see over here. Uh, so it, you differentiate the first, leaving the second, differentiate the second, leaving the first. And then we use, use these initial conditions. When x is 0, y should be 1, so 1 is y of 0 which is uh, if you plug in 0 here, you get uh, a cosine 0 and sine 0. What sine 0? Sine 0 is 0, whereas cosine 0 is 1. 1 times c1 is c1. e to 0 is 1. So uh, if you compute the right side, the only survivor is this 1 times c1 times 1, which is c1. Therefore, we know that c1 is 1. And then uh, we plug in negative 5 equal to y prime of 0. That means we replace all the x's here by 0. But once again, cosine 0 is 1, whereas 
the sine zero is zero, so these two disappear, whereas these two survive. E to zero is one, so they disappear also. So you have negative three over two times C one in the first parenthesis, first term here. And this second parenthesis here, uh, you get C two as a survivor, C two times one, so that's what you get. Now, since C one is one, you can plug this in here and solve for C two and get uh, uh, C two as negative seven over two. When you get your C1 and C2, it's really easy to stop and think that you got the answer, but that's not what the question is asking for. When you solve a differential equation, you're really looking for the, the function y as a function of x. So you have to put these two parameters back into your general solution and write this as your answer. So this must be your answer. Number 11. Set up the appropriate form of a particular solution, yp, for the following differential equation when using the method of undetermined coefficients, but do not determine the value of the coefficients. All right, so basically you're given this differential equation and uh, you solve such a uh, non-homogeneous differential equation by first figuring out a particular solution and then figure out the complementary solution and add the two together to get the general solution. That's how the scenario goes. Mm. But when you find the yp, one effective method is this method of undetermined coefficients. And uh, it's basically like this. If you need this, you include that in your, in your yp. So uh, you, you include this, this thing. So if I have x times e to the 2x, you include x times e to the 2x in your yp. However, you should also include its derivative. If you differentiate this, you see that there's a term that appears with uh, e to the 2x by itself because of the product rule. When you differentiate x, that becomes 1. You just have e to the 2x. So that's why you have a, ax plus b e to the 2x. All right, so and that, that's what you do. For each of the terms, include the function and its derivatives, all the terms appearing in its derivatives, and then uh, just put them into your yp. Um, it's almost simple as that, except that there are some cases where you have duplication. What does this mean? Duplication means when you have your complementary solution and somehow term that you want to include in your yp contains that complementary solution if they're duplicated it's a bad sign because these things when you plug it into the left side being the complementary solution it will produce you zero instead of producing what you want on the right and therefore to make it stronger against these differential operators on the left what you have to do is keep multiplying by x until you completely escape the duplication so uh, let's see how this thing works. So first, we decide that this should be what you need to make this 4x e to 2x appear on the right. However, because of the duplication, I multiply by x. But still, we see a duplication here. Here, it's x times e to 2x, right? That's duplicated here, so they are duplicated. Therefore, we have to multiply another x. So it should be x squared times ax plus b e to 2x. And that's the first time it escapes being duplicated so that should be the one that you have to multiply you can't go further you can't do x cubed that's that'll be another no no okay so you have to multiply by x just the right amount okay so that's the important step um, here either 2x cosine 2x uh, when you differentiate cosine you need the sine so uh, with the product rule you have either 2x with the sine 2x so it will require these two and then if you have x to the fourth, differentiating gives you x cubed, and differentiating gives you x squared, and so and so. So all these will be should be present in your yp. Therefore, putting all of them together, uh, this uh, this from here, uh, this one from here, this one from above, putting all of them together, we have the, the answer yp as this. To actually figure out the value of a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, and i, you should plug this into the left side uh, and then uh, set them equal to the right side and uh, set the coefficients equal to each other. It's going to be really long. Okay, That's why this question is not asking you to actually find it, uh, but at least uh, uh, it's asking you to figure out what form it is appropriate for 
method of undetermined coefficients. Okay, uh, here is a problem with method of variation of parameters. Uh, so, variation of parameters is a way to represent the yp, the particular solution, as the product of the, the uh, complementary solutions times some other function. Okay, And uh, you could follow through all the steps of the variation parameters, or you could simply just memorize this, which is more convenient. So that's what I did. To use this, you need the complementary solution and also the raw skin of the complementary solution. See, y1 and y2 are the two uh, complementary solutions you get from the characteristic equation. And then uh, w is the raw skin. All right, so uh, we first solve the characteristic equation. And we get plus minus 2i, which means cosine 2x and sine 2x. And then computing the raw skin, we get 2. So the w is replaced by 2. Sometimes this is some function. It's not always a number. In that case, you have to put that function in. Anyways, uh, we have this. And then you just have to integrate uh, left and right. Uh, this one is easy. Sine 2x is easy to integrate. This one is not. You have to know how, what, how to deal with this one. Uh, the effective way to deal with this is to replace sine squared by 1 minus cosine squared. And then you again split the fractions into two, 1 over cosine 2x. What's 1 over cosine 2x? That's sine 2x, right? And cosine squared over cosine uh, cosines cancel, leaving you with just one single cosine 2x. And then when you integrate each one of them, uh, secant x is secant x plus tangent x. Because of this 2 there, there's a 1 half in front. And then uh, sine, cosine 2x integrates into 1 half sine 2x. Again, this 1 half comes from the fact that you have this 2 there. And when we do this, uh, we're going to just disregard the c because we're just looking for one particular solution. We don't need general solutions here. Okay. All right, so we have that. We have this integral put in here, replacing this integral here. And then this integral is easy. Just integral of sine is negative cosine. But again, this 2 brings down this 1 half. So we have uh, this. And then if you multiply this out, you can see that this times this cancels with this times this. So the, the only yp you get is this single thing. So that's the answer.